This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9, with available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults, with zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute and available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. A science story, huh? Is NYU a scientist? They I felt, felt I feel right. right. I was so and I just thought, well, I figured it, out. it was that golden moment. Because science was on my side. Hi everyone, I'm Ben Lilly, and welcome to the Story Collider, where we bring you true stories of how science has affected people's lives. This week's story is from Michael Nidabach. The story was recorded in March 2013 at Union Hall in Brooklyn. The theme of the night was brain awareness. So my story starts when I was a sophomore in college. I was sitting in the TV room in my fraternity house, watching some TV. And I hear the phone ringing. The, you know, we have this common phone in the hallway. And it's ring, it's ring, ring. And I'm like, fuck this. I'm not answering this phone. And then one of my brothers goes in the phone. He goes, hello, hello. And I hear, Mike, Mike, phone's for you. So I leave the TV room, go into the hallway, pick up the phone. I'm like, hey, this is Mike. What's up? And this person goes, hello, is this Mr. Nittaback? Like, yeah. Uh, this is the office of the University Scholars Program, and you have to come and speak to the director of the program about your plan for undergraduate research. So I'm like, oh my god, what is this? <laughs> so, so I go to this office, I sit down in this office, and there's like this old guy with gray hair and like a suit and a bow tie, and he's sitting there, and he goes, so Mr. Nittaback, what is your major? So I go, well, philosophy. He says, well, you know, what sort of philosophy? So I said, well, actually, I'm very interested in the philosophy of the mind. He says, oh, that's really interesting. Why are you interested in the philosophy of the mind? I said, well, you know, I really find it interesting to think about how it is that the human mind can process information and perceive the world and generate complex behavior patterns like speech and thought. And, and he's like, oh, OK, that's really, really great. But you know, if you want to understand the mind, what you got to do is you got to understand the brain. So I'm like, uh, OK. So he says to me, look, you go to this laboratory in the biology department. It's room blah, blah, and such and such building. You tell the head of the lab, I sent you there. You tell him, you're going to work with this postdoc in the lab. And you're going to study the brain. And don't worry about this philosophy of mind nonsense. So I show up in this guy's uh, laboratory, and I go, you know, hey, professor, I'm Mike Nittaback, professor so-and-so, the director of this program. He sent me here. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's great, that's great. I said, you know, I'm here to work with this guy, uh, this postdoc in your lab. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's great, that's great, that's great. Go in his office, it's right over there. So I go in this guy's office, and I start talking to him. He's like, so, what are you doing here? I'm like, yeah, you know, professor so-and-so sent me over here. I'm supposed to uh, learn neuroscience from you. So he's like, okay, this is awesome. So he starts explaining these things about like the brain and how these different connections within the brain work. And we start doing science and doing experiments. And I'm working this lab months and months. And then like a year goes by. And now I'm a senior. And I'm like doing a senior thesis on neuroscience, really uh, trying to understand how like internal state variables, things like are you hungry, are you thirsty, how does that influence your sensory perceptions? of the food or potential items that are in front of you. And these people are all like, OK, so you know, now where are you going to grad school? And there was like no discussion of like, oh, do you want to go to grad school? <laughs> do you want to become an actual scientist? Or is this just you know, something interesting for you to do? And when I actually started college, my plan was, I want to be a lawyer. I'm going to be a philosophy major. I'm going to become a lawyer. And so this discussion of like, where are you going to grad school, it just completely overwhelmed my ability to even speak back against these people, right, who are my mentors, people that I trust and really you know, had a huge amount of respect for. So I ended up going to grad school, basically where they told me to go. <laughs> 
to become a PhD in neuroscience. And so I'm in grad school, and I'm doing my science, and you know, the thing that you don't understand at first when you go from being an undergrad to going to grad school, you know, as an undergrad, you take all these different courses, you learn the breadth of a field, you read all these different things, and then you go to grad school, and you go in a laboratory, and they're like, here's this thing. See this thing? It's like this fucking big, okay? And you are gonna spend the next five years staring at this fucking thing, okay? And not only that, it's a privilege to do so. So I'm like there in grad school and it's like staring at this fucking thing and it's like, oh yeah, hey look, at this side of the fucking thing, there's like this other little thing. And, and, and oh my God, on the edge of the little thing, on the side of the thing, there's this other thing. It's like fucking amazing. So I'm going along, I'm going along. And then, you know, by like the fifth year of this, I'm just like, I can't look at this fucking thing anymore. This is fucking ridiculous. And so then I remember, and I think back, and I think, oh my God, I was supposed to be a lawyer. What am I doing here? <laughs> so I take the LSAT, and I apply to law school. <laughs> this is true. This is, not a, this is not made up. And I get my PhD, and I go to law school. And I'm like, thank God I got out of there alive. I don't have to look at this fucking thing anymore. So, so now I'm in law school. Law school is very interesting. Fine, fine, fine. Go through law school. I intern at a law firm. I'm like, I'm going to be like the world's most awesome patent lawyer. <laughs> Get a job at this great firm. Take my bar exam. And then I'm just hanging out. I take the bar exam. I'm like, yeah, I'd probably pass. It should be all right. And then I get a phone call from one of my buddies who was one of my best friends from first year of grad school. And he goes, Mike, I just started my own lab here in New York at NYU. I'm a new professor. And I'm like, oh, that's fucking cool, man. I'm going to come say hello. So I go down to his lab, actually, uh, at NYU. And I walk in the room. And I, I walk in. And I'll, I'll, just, I'll never forget this. I walk in the room. It's like an empty room. And there's like this stack of boxes. And they are filled with equipment. Electrophysiology equipment. Biochemistry equipment. Molecular biology equipment. And my heart, it just started to pound. <laughs> I mean, it was pounding. My mouth was dry, kind of like it is now. And I looked at this stuff, and I looked at my friend, and I was like, oh, hey, this is pretty cool, man. How about... You know, I'm taking a few weeks off after taking the bar exam before I start working in this gigantic law firm. Maybe I'll just help you unpack your boxes, whatever. <laughs> you can see where this is going. So I start opening the boxes. So I start, so I open these boxes and I'm like unpacking the shit. I'm like, oh, I throw the little peanuts away, whatever. They actually have these peanuts that are made out of like some kind of starch shit. So you just put them in the sink and turn the water on, and they, what happened? So, so I'm opening these boxes, and I put these things, and I'm like, well, fuck, I open these boxes. Like, let's turn some of the shit on. So then I decide I'm going to run an electrophoresis gel. Anybody know what an electrophoresis gel is? Oh, lots of people. All right. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to pour a Western blot polyacrylamide fucking gel. <laughs> And you know, when you get your lab set up, the company, they give you like free shit to get you hooked on like the expensive crap that makes it easier for you, for you the student or postdoc or whatever, to do your shit. But your lab head is like, you fucking purify those restriction enzymes yourself, motherfucker. <laughs> so I take these pre-stained sizes. No one even got that joke. So... <laughs> So I take these pre-stained size marks and I load them on this fucking page gel and then I plug the wires into this uh, power supply and I turn the fucking power on and you know, anyone seen this, like you see the bubbles, right? Because it's an electricity going through this salt solution. And so your electrode at the bottom of this gel box, putting a field across this gel, 
the fucking bubbles are bubbling. And I'm just like, fucking, this is fucking great. <laughs> so, so I immediately go and I call this law firm on the phone. I'm like, hey, hello, this is Mike Nidabak. Uh, instead of starting on October 1st at your fine law firm, I'm actually going to start on November 1st. Is that OK? And they're like, um, OK. So then I go back to my buddy. And he's like, dude, we're going to do some experiments for the next month. <laughs> and he's like, OK, man. So I'm doing experiments, doing experiments. Month goes by. And I'm like, oh, fuck, man, this is bullshit. So I call the law firm again. I'm like, um, I'll see you on December 1st. And they're like, OK. So then I go back to my buddy. I'm like, yeah, man, another month of experiments. And he's like, OK. So I go back in the lab, and I'm doing my shit. We're making shit happen. December 1st comes. I call this law firm. I'm like, all right, man, January 1st. And they're like, you don't show up on January 1st. You don't have a fucking job here. Go boom, boom, boom. January 1st comes, and I'm in the lab. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I know I got to call these people. And I'm like doing whatever, the gel or growing <laughs> cells or who the fuck knows what. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, and I, and I'm getting ready to call these people on the phone. And, I, and, and it just clicked into my head. It's like, you know what? Fuck it, man. I'm a fucking neuroscientist. <laughs> That was Michael Nittabach. Mike is Associate Professor of Cellular and Molecular Physiology and of Genetics at Yale School of Medicine, where he directs a research program aimed at understanding how neural circuits process information and control behavior. This event was produced in conjunction with Bee Brainy NYC as part of the Dana Foundation's Brain Awareness Week. For more science stories, take a look at storycollider.org, where we have archives of the podcast and upcoming events. Our next events are June 18th in Manhattan and June 25th in London. The Story Collider is produced by me, Brian Wecht, Aaron Barker, and Ari Daniel Shapiro. The podcast is produced by Rose Eveleth. Additional help from Brooke Williams, Lena Groger, and Justin D'Ambrosio. The theme music is by Ghost. Special thanks to Union Hall for hosting the show, to B. Brainy for providing the theme, and to Law School for never once tempting me. Thanks for listening. What if you could have a career where the opportunities are as vast as our nation, where it's not about mission statements, but a shared mission? At U.S. Customs and Border Protection, we go beyond to protect more than borders. From ship to shore, air to ground, cities to local communities, CBP agents and officers are keeping people safe. Join U.S. Customs and Border Protection and go beyond for something far greater than yourself. Learn more at cbp.gov careers.